Thank you, George. Can, can you all see the screen? Yes, yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. So today I'm going to present to you Detect, Understand, Act, a neurosymbolic hierarchical reinforcement learning framework. So I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but we'll go through it together slowly and dissect each of its components and how they interact. But first, this wouldn't be a good RL presentation if I didn't begin by lauding its merits and how far we've come in the past decade. So I'm sure you're all accustomed to seeing these two slides or two images. Um, over the last decade, the marriage of reinforcement learning and deep learning has been incredibly fruitful. It has managed to beat humans at various games ranging from Atari to chess to Go. And these feats are all the more impressive as we humans often use these very games, such as chess and Go, as a proxy for testing intelligence. As such, deep reinforcement learning has often been heralded as a key player in the push for AGI, with the measures of progress being high score on these very games. A uh, brief primer on deep reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning was conceived to answer the question of how to convert observations into appropriate actions in a stochastic world. The RL model is typically formulated as a market decision process where the world is decomposed into states, actions, rewards, and probabilities. The learning paradigm thus becomes learning what action to take given a state with the objective of maximizing cumulative reward. Neural networks being universal function approximators provide the perfect substrate to abstract this optimal state to action mapping. And that is what we coin deep reinforcement learning. However, using neural networks has caused deep reinforcement learning to inherit many of deep learning's drawbacks. So I imagine most people in this conference will have seen something like this far too many times as well. Um, so I won't list all, all, all the drawbacks, but it, to, if you concentrate on the first and the last ones in particular, we must ask ourselves, how far can we truly push the claim that these DRL agents are really working their way up the spectrum of intelligence? Indeed, we said that we have been using these very video games over the last decade as a proxy for intelligence. However, seldomly do these praiseworthy RL systems discernibly contain even traces of what are considered some of the most basic human cognitive faculties, such as causal inference, spatial reasoning, or generalization. And it is not entirely clear whether this is an intrinsic limitation of deep systems themselves, or otherwise a byproduct of the tasks in which we are training them. And so in the hope of assessing the latter, one of the co-authors of this paper created the Animal AI environment and associated test bed that can function as a benchmark for testing these sorts of traits. It is a configurable video game environment, which hopes to bring the discrepancy to life and reorient AI research towards creating systems that more closely mimic or acquire basic human cognitive skills. The environment itself was released as part of a competition in 2019 and contains an extensive test bed inspired by real toddler and animal experiments to test a variety of human cognitive skills. So to bring this to life, um, as you can see on the left, there's a monkey who's being tested to see if he can realize that he needs to put his arm through the right of the transparent object. And likewise, in Animal AI, you have a similar experiment where a deep reinforcement learning agent is also failing at understanding how to get to the, the goal. And the same thing, but uh, successful for a dog and deep reinforcement learning agent. So this is the crux of it. It's trying to test our AI systems with the same rigor that we've been testing uh, mammalian species for cognitive abilities. And as I said, it's configurable. It's composed of these simple building blocks and they're used to make a variety of uh, real of, of virtual experiments inspired by real cognitive experiments. Um, I'll go through, a, a lot of these tasks explicitly require a high level understanding of the environment to act appropriately. So these tasks therefore also lend themselves particularly well to a neurosymbolic approach. And I'll go through a few of these. Um, the spatial elimination category has these forced choice tasks where the agent has, is on a platform and needs to decide whether to go left or right to where the goal is most likely to, to be to be hidden. And this, they just require under notion, understanding notions of occlusion, choice, and exploitation of spatial reasoning. Similarly, the maze-like tasks have a very tight deadline, and so you need to explore the, the arena efficiently to reach the goal. And causal reasoning, which was um, is one of the most challenging uh, subcategories in the test bed, involves using a tool to pull or push the goal off of, so in Animal AI, the red zone is lava or danger zone. The episode terminates unsuccessfully if the agent goes on this. And then there are ramps. You need to use the ramp to get to the goal. 
balance on platforms. Um, object permanence is another interesting one where the environment blacks out for a bit and the agent needs to realize that the goal hasn't magically vanished, but it's behind our including objects. And so just so you get an idea of the, the type of test bed we were dealing with. And I know what you're thinking, very hard. <laughs> Uh, and it's uh, as demonstrated by the relatively poor performance of the top submissions in the 2019 testbed, it's very hard to say the least. And these tasks are particularly hard for so-called flat methods, where the state space is considered a huge flat space. The amount of exploration required to stumble upon the correct policy for these tasks becomes prohibitively, prohibitively large. But what if the state action space wasn't flat? So this is what hierarchical reinforcement learning has aimed to develop uh, over the years. It leverages the intrinsic compositionality of goals and sub-goals to simplify complex tasks using a divide and conquer strategy. Theoretically, decomposing a problem hierarchically can greatly reduce both space and time complexity in the learning and execution of the overall task. Options are one of the most popular formulations of HRL. They allow the RL agent to be divided into three components, the primitive actions, the temporally extended actions composed of primitive actions called options, and high-level policy over options. So the high-level policy decides. Um, uh, sorry, the high-level policy decides which option to initiate at a given state. Options are ex executed until a termination criteria is met, usually reaching a sub-goal or a timeout. The high-level policy is then queried again to decide which option should be executed next. So this is hierarchical reinforcement learning. And then the final piece of the puzzle to understand. Uh, the tools that we've used to build our framework and also the motivations behind them is uh, ASP and ILASP. So ASP is a declarative logic programming language and it uses uh, rules such as if hungry, find food. And it's particularly adept at solving uh, complex reasoning tasks with large search spaces. Then ILASP is a ILP language that uses ALP and it uses new rules. And the learning task is comprised of background knowledge, in the form of rules, a language bias to constrain the hypothesis space, and examples to learn from. Great. So now you should have all the tools to understand um, the framework itself. Before we dive in, it's important to make the distinction between the different levels of temporal and spatial abstraction referred to throughout. So as I was saying with HRL, there are temporally extended actions and events. This, these sorts of actions and events are what the understand component deals with while the detect and act components are on the micro level, as we call it, and they interact event directly on the environmental uh, time steps using primitive actions. And I'll explain in a second what this filter means. But let's go through step by step and see what look this looks like in practice. So the environment outputs observations, a three-channeled RGB image, as well as um, a velocity vector. The detect module, which is a classical computer vision module, uh, fetches the bounding boxes of the various objects in the scene and transforms it into a logic program, as well as incorporating also the relationships between the various objects. So you can see platform two is platform with ID two and goal with ID three, and saying that the goal is on top of the, of the platform. Then this symbolic program is sent to the understand module, which Given its background knowledge, um, uh, so an assumption is that there's a goal always, always present, and the meta policy, which we'll go over in a second, uh, which ranks what is the op optimal option to choose given certain uh, conditions and states, it chooses an option. Then this option, which is a high level temporally extended action, is sent to the act module. The act module, the um, interacts with an environment in a loop until it uh, receives a ter uh, until the termination criteria. And it takes the environmental observations, filters them based on the object it's interested in. So here it's saying the option chosen was climb object one. So it will only show to the DRL policy option one. And it will output a primitive action, which will then be fed to the environment and so forth until the termination criteria. So now to take a, a bit of a deeper look into each one of these components, the detect module, again, it's, it, it gets the bounding boxes and then creates a symbolic object representation out of them. The understand module 
it takes the state representation, passes it through the ASP reasoner, and outputs an option. And on the sidelines, you can have this optional, optional component, which is an ILASP inductive meta policy learner, which uh, stores all the traces of these states going in, options coming out, and the reward fed by the environment, and ultimately decides what the optimal meta policy is. And this is using inductive logic programming. Um, here you can have an example of what the ASP reasoner looks like. You have your assumptions, um, your observables, uh, so some background knowledge rules that govern the observables. Here, this action logic is outputting a single answer set, uh, a single uh, initiate option per answer set. And then you have termination criteria associated with each of the, the options. And finally, your meta policy, which tells you what options to take given what context. Finally, we have the act component, which, as we said, takes the, the option from the ASP reasoner, instantiates an option. And so I, I keep talking about these options. These options are pre-trained DRL agents. And we use proximal policy optimization. And so let's say you've chosen the climb uh, option. You choose the climb uh, pre-trained policy. You send it into this loop with the environment and the detector, and, and it executes until it reaches its termination criteria. And how do we train these op pre train these options? We create, uh, so for example, for the climb um, option, we create a, a, um, a randomly generated environment with different episodes where the agent needs to uh, climb the wall or climb the platform to get to the goals. And these are randomly generated. So not too much um, effort on, the, on, on training these. And then the balance, uh, just another example, the, we train the agent and have it balance uh, on randomly generated platforms to reach the goal. Now, inductive meta policy learning. This one is, this is the cornerstone of our approach. And it revolves around choosing a subset of training arenas to train the meta policies, so to, to collect traces to be able to train the symbolic learner. And let's say we have these three training arenas. There's a forced choice uh, uh, arena, there's a climb on ramp, and there's an avoid red object arena. So we have these three associated options as well that we pre-trained. And we randomly execute these options um, for a, a, a given amount of um, different uh, episodes. We collect all these traces. We then abstract. So I, I, if you remember, there were IDs for every individual um, object. We can abstract away of that to be able to combine multiple similar or equivalent states. And then we learn preferences uh, based on the Q values for each state. Um, option pair. And at the end of this, we get our meta policy, which you can see here. Um, and just to give it a bit more of a formal notation, this is what it looks like in, in ILAS. You have your three examples for uh, three examples where you see a goal, you see a, two walls, and if you see the goal and nothing's obstructing it, then you can see E1 is preferred over E2 and E3 and which is interact with the goal rather than rotate and avoiding um, the goal. So now to the results. We tested this on the same test bed from 2019, and we achieved state of the art in multiple of the most challenging subcategories, including object, uh, object permanence, ramp usage, spatial elimination, avoid red, uh, numerosity, and, and a few others, and generally performed quite highly in uh, the other subcategories. And you can see an example of a final meta policy, what it looks like. I was just showing uh, simpler examples earlier, but you can learn a symbolic meta policy that incorporates all the different uh, subcategories and how to rank the, the options accordingly. Um, how about we take a look at a few of the a few snippets from the agent in action? So this was the object permanence. Uh, challenge where the agent had to realize that it needed to wait until the the light was put back, uh, explore the, the occluding object, and then once it sees the goal, it goes towards the goal. So you, you're seeing three options being chosen one after another and reasoning over from the ASP reasoner. 
then uh, ramp usage, there are quite a few here. I, I may not show all of them. Um, first, the agent is, decides to climb up the ramp, then it realizes it can't go straight to the goal. It needs to balance on the platform before reaching the, the goal. And then finally, it reaches the goal. And, and a few more examples of these. I'll let them run because they're quite exciting. Good, <laughs> because, um, yeah. I, would, I would propose that we um, speed up because there are interesting okay. questions in the chat. Okay, yeah, I can't see the time nor the, nor the chat questions. So anyway, a few more examples of the agent performing well. Um, meta policy training, we wanted to investigate what, the, what was the effect of the training arena, arenas you chose um, to, to learn this meta policy. And so we, we checked how many traces you needed to successfully succeed on each individual uh, training arena. So here you can see these and how the, this affected the performance on the overall category scores. And then also how, um, if we incrementally increase the number of training arenas, so we start with just basic, and then you, you can't avoid red because you just have the basic uh, macro action. Then we go on to the options, uh, the, the lava being able to avoid. And you see it starts to perform well in the lava uh, category and so forth with ramp once we in, give the ramp training arena, then it does that as well. Um, finally, quick point on meta policy training. There's, uh, at the end, you see that there's a, um, a distribution where there are very few, but highly optimal options to be chosen. And then a lot of suboptimal options that have a negative Q value. And this is what it looks like in ILASP. And I'll quickly move on to the future work. Um, so future work, we included background knowledge into the system, um, and this could in the future be learned uh, directly by ILASP. And we could also add more complicated reasoning structures. So for example, you could add time steps to each one of these parameters so that you can reason on events across multiple time steps. In the current iteration of, the, of, of uh, DUA, we only um, reasoned on one time step, step, time step at a time. And obviously, we would also like to apply this general framework to other environments, such as meta world, and uh, increase performance on some of the most challenging um, tasks, such as causal reasoning. Another blue sky um, direction would be to leverage the dependencies between the different options rather than training all the options separately. And, um, and yeah, and, I'll, and in conclusion, we've shown. Uh, we've proposed these two novel frameworks, DUA and uh, Inductive Meta Policy Learning. We've de demonstrated its effectiveness in solving certain tasks for the 2019 competition testbed in Animal AI. And we've discussed potential avenues for extending the work. Not sure how long this took, but hopefully this leaves enough time for some interesting questions. <laughs>